Hallelujah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Pastor Guma, for leading us in such uh, a moment of prayer and praying and engaging us in the realm of the spirit. Thank you so much for the ministry that you are doing, uh, availing this opportunity for us to uh, share the word of God and to share the fellowship of the brethren. I want to thank everyone who takes this time off and uh, chooses that we will uh, pray. You know, you wake up every morning and choose to pray. Uh, that's a very special gift that you're giving uh, to your life. You see, prayer is a gift that you give to yourself. It's a gift that you give to yourself. And so uh, this morning, I want to congratulate you. Thank you so much for praying. And I believe that everything we have prayed for has been granted. And that is something celebratable. Something celebratable. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I bring you greetings from our father, Apostle Grace Rubega of Fanero Ministries. I bring you greetings from my family. My wife, Dana Masasi, is tuned in uh, yesterday. Uh, we had a great time in the word of God uh, with her. Uh, and we, we bring you love from our family, our family here. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, we will continue on what we began last time. And uh, I believe we'll finish it. I believe we'll finish it today. And I pray that you'll be touched in a special way. If you have any, any, anything that you want changed, this message, I believe, will uh, also play a role in changing it. You know, uh, many times we, we want to pray uh, to change things, but some things are actually changed by uh, the word of God, you see. Sometimes when you pray, God will send you the word. Now, if you're not interested in the word, but you're just interested in the prayer, then you'll miss your answers because when you, when you pray, you expect God to answer you. And when God is answering, many times he will give you a word. So you have to be a, a, a word lover, a word lover. If you, if you love to pray, you also must love the word of God because if you pray, God will respond. And God normally will respond with his word and if he responds with his word you better be a, a word lover better be a word lover praise the lord jesus christ and so we want to continue talking about this ministry of watching the ministry of the watchman the ministry of the watchman and we're going to look at several aspects you know, of this ministry and um, responsibility now we all are called into that responsibility of prayer. All of us are called into that responsibility to pray. And so it's important to study about prayer. Prayer is a very big topic. It's a very, very big topic, but it has been taught uh, just basically. People just know the basic things of prayer. You know, all around the world, in local languages, prayer means asking. It means asking. That's all people know about praying. They know, uh, if, like in, in, in Riyankole, prayer is okshaba. Okay? That is okshaba. And that means to, let's go and ask. When you say, lekat shabi. It means let's ask. Luganda, the same thing. To survey. To survey. Let us ask. <laughs> so that, that is coming from the, how we understand prayer. We have understood prayer to be asking. And so every time uh, a man goes on his knees, he goes on his knees to ask. He goes on his knees, oh God, give me this. Oh God, do this for me. I ask you to do this. Lord, I ask you. Please do that. I ask you to do that. So it's all about asking, asking, and asking the Lord, asking the Lord. That is a very primary uh, way, a primary function of praying is, you know, to ask. And asking is more for children, okay? Asking is more for children. It's children that ask. Children, if you have children at home, you will notice that they ask a lot. I want this. I want this. Uh, you know, here in, at home, uh, our kids normally say, me, they begin with me, I want. 
<laughs> me i want that's a sign that someone is a child when it is about them and what they want me i want this me i want that me i want when you grow you begin to want things for others you begin to pray for others but also you begin to move from just asking from asking because again when you ask the bible says let's read the verse uh, so that we are guided properly it says um for example um in the book of uh, matthew chapter 7 verse 7 matthew 7 7 he says ask and it shall be given you just ask so yes asking is part of praying just ask and it shall be given so whatever you ask shall be given ask and it shall be given okay seek and you shall find okay knock and it shall be opened unto you you see that it says ask and shall be given seek so you see there's more than asking there's also seeking okay there is asking but there's seeking it says seek and you shall find seeking is not asking asking is not seeking it says knock and it shall be opened unto you knock and it shall be opened unto you okay so many people ask they have not moved to seeking they have not moved to knocking okay they don't know that they could actually knock they don't know that it is a seeking but all these things are in prayer all these are facets of prayer but many are on the asking. When you talk about seeking, this is where now you are, this is where you are consulting. When you talk about seeking, that's now consultation. Lord, where do we go from here? Okay? Where do we go from here? What is our next instruction? Now that you're seeking, you're seeking the mind of God. You want to know, you want to know, Lord, what do we do from here? Or how do we proceed? Okay, how do we proceed? David asked, shall I pursue? See, he didn't ask, oh God, give me my enemies. No, he says, Lord, I just need permission. Shall I pursue? Should I chase this thing? Should I chase this thing? And when I chase it, will I catch it? <laughs> That's what he asks. says, Lord, should I chase this? And if I chase it, will I catch it? What is he doing? He's seeking. He's inquiring. So there's more to prayer than just asking. Because you no know, David was coming from a war with his men, and but they were tired and they reached at home and they found a new problem. They were from one, they were from conquering, fighting. They came back home very tired, having you know had a very bloody uh, moment. They reached home and they found their women had been taken, their children had been taken, their properties had been messed up. Now, for some Christians, they will say, oh, pray, oh God, I, I, I pray that they bring back our, our wives. I pray that they bring back our children. I pray that they bring back our things. I pray that they bring back, bring back, bring back, bring back, and the things will never come back. <laughs> because there, you, you, you don't wait for them to come back. You pursue. You see? So many people... They, they are at that place of, Lord, do it, Lord, do it, Lord, do it, Lord, do it. They're not willing to know when they should also do something, okay? Whether or not they should pursue. There's when you have to pursue something, okay? But then now you have to ask from the Lord. David asked from God. He asked from God and says, Lord, shall I pursue? Shall I pursue? He was inquiring. He was seeking. He was seeking. Then there's also in prayer where you knock. In prayer where you knock, where you have identified a door. There are, there are places where you identify a door. You have seen a door. And you want access to that place. You, are, you want access to that place, but it is closed. And so you begin to knock. To The knocking is requesting for 
entry. Okay. I have identified the place and I want to enter into that dimension. I want to enter into that area. And so what? I request for entry in prayer. I request for entry. That's the meaning of knocking. You knock, you are requesting for entry. Requesting for entry. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So I, I brought that this, this scripture to help us understand that there is more you can do in prayer than just asking. Because also beyond these that I've just shared, the three, there is what we call fellowship with God. Fellowship with God is not even in these dimensions. Maybe seeking could try. But when you talk about fellowship with God, it goes beyond you seeking his mind concerning your matters. There is where now you fellowship with him in prayer, where you have communication with God. Let me look at, let's look at that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. In the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2. 1 Corinthians 14, 2. He says, For he that speaks in an unknown tongue, he that speaks in an unknown tongue, speaks not unto men, but unto God. Speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him. How be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. It says, the one who speaks in an unknown tongue, he says, speaks not unto men, which means he has shifted realms. He's no longer in the realm of men. Now, many people pray from the realm of men. They are asking, seeking, and knocking is in the realm of men. They pray from this physical realm. We started about that when we were talking about the, the realms of the spirit. They pray from the first realm, the realm of men. The realm of men. They pray from here. Everything. Their prayers are on this plane. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Their prayers are on this plane. It says, the one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto men. He is not communicating from the realm of men. Then it says, but unto God. He speaks unto God. Now, this is the kind of fellowship you have with God. When you begin to speak in other tongues, you now are fellowshipping with God. You are speaking with God. You are speaking with God. You are beginning to talk with him. Because there's a dimension of prayer where you talk to God. And that is the commonest among Christians. They talk to God. Many Christians talk to God. They have not come to a place where they talk with God, okay? Because the God you're talking to, does he talk? Okay. The God you talk to, for him, does he speak? He must be speaking. He must speak. Our God is a speaking God. He's a speaking God. So when you speak, you should be expecting him to speak back, okay? If you talk to God, you have to expect a response. Now, many people pray, and they expect the response to be the answer to what they were asking. That's what happens with many people. They pray, and the response they expect from God is the answer. If they were praying, for example, that uh, there's a healing that should be established in their relative, the response they're expecting from God is the healing in their relative. Okay? If they were praying for a job, the answer they expect from God is the opening up of that job. But God will not just respond by giving you that job or giving you what you are requesting for. He might respond with the word. <laughs> because when you ask for the job, have you heard what God has said about that job, the one you're asking for? And what if God has a bigger plan for you than just that job? So you have to learn to talk with God. Now he says, he that speaks in an unknown tongue shifts from the realm of men and begins to speak at the realm of God. He begins to speak at the realm of God. And he says, he says, speaks unto God. But this is the kind of prayer where you're now talking with God. You're having communication with God. He says, for no man understands him. Why? Because he's not functioning. He's not praying from that realm. 
that also has something to, uh, to, to look at. It says no man understands him. Now, if you know that you, you, if you want to know whether you are serious in prayer or you have grown in prayer, you have to look at that. It says no man understands him. If all your prayers you're praying, the prayers you're praying, if they are being understood by men, if they are prayers that can be understood by men, you are still an infant in prayer. You have to pray a prayer which a man can't understand. A prayer which if a man hears, he will not understand. If the things you are praying are things a man can understand, <laughs> you're still praying in the realm of men. You see, that's why we pray in other tongues. Those are things man cannot understand. Because we are speaking at the God level. Speaking at the God level. If you don't speak in tongues, desire it. Because everything you get from God, desire must be the one to begin them. Desire them. Desire them. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So it says, he that speaks in unknown tongues speaks not unto men, but unto God. For no man understands him. It says, how be it in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. He speaks mysteries. So when you talk about the ministry of a watchman, this watchman must understand prayer must understand prayer. What is prayer? To know all that prayer is. To know all that prayer is. There's a prayer where you are communicating with God. And that one is more effective than the one where you're just talking to God, asking God. Even though he said, ask and you shall receive. You have to grow from that level of asking to receive. To a place where you begin to see the mind of God. To pray according to his will. That's what the Bible talks about. Praying according to his will. But how are you going to know his will? Let's look at that, that, that uh, verse. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In the book of James, I believe. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, um, no, First John chapter 5. It's First John chapter 5, verse 14. First John 5, 14. He says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. This is the confidence. We have so related with this God until now we have confidence. <laughs> says, this is the confidence we have. This is John speaking. He says, we have this confidence. We are confident. We have come to a place of confidence. Now, that's, that is something that uh, uh, every watcher or a person who prays must have. Confidence. Confidence. When you're praying, are you confident or you're shaking? Are you confident or you're not sure? When you're, when you're praying, there has to be a confidence. A confidence in your God. First of all, a confidence that what you're doing is making sense. Okay, there are people who pray, but they don't even know that the prayer is going to do anything. They're just praying. They wish the prayer works. No, we don't wish our prayer works. By the time we are praying, we are confident it will happen. We are confident that we are causing changes. We are confident that we are shifting things. We are confident. We are confident. We are not confused. We are confident. He says, and this is the confidence that we have in him. We have come to a place of confidence in him that... If we ask anything, if we ask anything, 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 we have come to a place where if we ask for anything, it says, according to his will, he hears us. If we ask anything, according to his will, he hears us. So our asking is according to his will. Our asking is according to his will. Now, if you don't have that will, if you don't know that will, your asking will not be heard because it says when we ask according to his will, we have his ear. It says he hears, he hears. We have an ear. God gives us his ear. Why? Because we are asking according to his will. Anything that is not according to his will, God has not given it an ear. God has not given it an ear. What God gives an ear is what is according to his will. He's not saying, 
ask for his will. When you look at that verse, because many people think you have to ask for God's will. No. It is not asking for his will. It is asking according to his will, which means whatever you are requesting should agree with the will of God, should agree with what is already in the will of God, should agree. The will of God is the word of God. The will of God is the word of God, which means you ought to have the word of God in you. You ought to have been transformed by the word of God to begin praying. Prayer, which is coming from your agreement with the word of God. Oh, hallelujah. You see, because there are people whose prayers contradict scripture. Their prayers contradict scripture. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Their prayers contradict scripture. Okay? They do not have an understanding of the word of God. So they cannot pray according to the will of God. Now, if you don't pray according to the will of God, you are not heard. Okay? You will not be heard. You will not be heard. This is, this is the confidence. First, we have confidence that if we pray, if we ask for anything according to his will, he hears us. He hears us. Verse 15. Says, and if, it says, and if we know that he hears us, Masataya, if we know Look at that. If we know that he hears us, if we know, if we have knowledge that he hears us, when you pray, do you know that he, God hears you? Do you know that he has heard? When you pray, do you know that he has heard? Yes. The moment we know that he has heard. So how do you know that God has heard? When you have prayed according to his will. When you pray according to the will of God, you know that you have been heard. <laughs> you know that you have been heard. You know, and when he says, and if we know that we have been heard, he says, whatsoever we ask, he says, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. If we know that he has heard, we know that we have. <laughs> if we know that he has heard, we know that we have. Hey, <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, it looks like we have lost a, a pastor. Pastor, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. If we have, there you are, Pastor. We had lost you for 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 a few minutes there. We couldn't hear what you were saying. If you could read, uh, uh, go back a bit. Oh, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Sorry for that. That's all right. Sorry for that. Uh, let's, okay. go, let's go back and read again that verse. First John chapter 5, verse 15. Ch yes, chapter 5, verse 15 says, And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions we desired of him. It says this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So what we ask according to his will is hard. And if it is hard, in verse 15, he says, And if we know that he hears us, how do you know that he hears you? How do you know that God has heard you when you have prayed according to his word, according to his will? Okay? This says he hears us. And then it says, if we know that he hears us, if we know that he hears us, then it says, we know that we have what we requested for. If we know that he has heard us, then we know that we have Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you know that you have, if you know that you have, you can't, after prayer, act like you did not receive. Okay? You cannot, after praying, act like you don't have. Because he says, when we ask, we are heard. When we ask according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he has heard, 
as long as he has that, all it requires is for it to reach God's ears. If it reaches God's ears, we have what we have asked for. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Which means after praying, you are sure that the things you have asked for have been granted. But then how do you arrive there? He says, if you pray according to his will. So there's a will. There is a will, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And you have to have fellowship with that will. You have to know about that will. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to know about that will. Thank you, Spirit of God. So I want us to go again deeper into this ministry of the watchman and see three main areas, three main areas where this watchman needs to be developed. Okay, three main areas where the watchman needs to be developed. Now, we just had uh, hints last time. We had a hint last time where we talked about uh, the, the watchman that is blind and he, he cannot speak, he's dumb, and he cannot bark, you see. So I want us now to look at it in a bit more of detail, and then we shall pray. And we shall pray. Three main areas where the watchman has to be developed. Now, prayer is, a, is an opportunity. It's an opportunity given to us to affect the circumstances of our life. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity because, you see, prayer is a ministry. It's a ministry. And ministries, if the word ministry is, even in the local language, it means to give. In our language, it's called obhereza, obhereza, giving. Okay, that's giving. Obhereza, obhereza, that's the same thing in Uganda, to give. I don't know if you speak another language, how it is in your language. But ministry means, its primary understanding is that it, there's a giving. So prayer is a ministry given to us. You see, it ministers to us, prayer ministers to us. The things, the circumstances of our life cannot only change by hard work, cannot only change by wisdom, cannot only change by consult, consultation, consulting who and consulting who. Prayer is one of the ways that we are given, one of the ministries given to us to cause changes where we need them, to cause changes where we need them. So we have to take this matter serious. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. But also, watching is a higher responsibility because uh, we are not called to just watch for our own lives, but to watch also for others, to be able to, 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 to detect things in the, spirit of, in the spirit realm and then have, you know, pray. Pray for the will of God to prevail. Pray for the will of God. Like Jesus said, your, your, your kingdom come, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. Why did, why did Jesus pray that? Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth. He prayed that because on earth, the will of God is not being done. So he says, let your kingdom come and your will be done on earth. Then he says, as it is in heaven, which means in heaven, the will of God is happening. On earth, it is not happening. And so he says, let your kingdom come and then your will be done. Because the coming of his kingdom will establish the will of God upon the earth. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He was, you see, when he prayed that prayer, he was not praying it for himself. He says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth. But what I like to pray, your will be done on us. Us, I was say, for us. <laughs> Jesus says, earth. For him, he had gone to a level where now he was praying for the earth. He says, your will be done on earth. Okay? Not just on me. Your will be done on me. No. He says, your will be done on earth. He had shifted from praying for himself. He was now looking at the earth, the entire earth. Praise God. The entire earth. So the three areas, very first. The three areas, very first. The first area which is obvious for the watchman, 
for him to be developed in is the area of his eyes, the area of sight, the area of sight, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, the area of sight. How do you see? What is the condition of your eyes? What is the condition of your eyes? And I'm not talking about your eyes, the ones you're using to see now. No, I'm talking about the eye that interprets. Okay, the eye that interprets. How do you see things? How is your seeing? Last time we read a scripture that talks about, talked about how your eye has to be single. It talks about the singleness of eye. Let's look at that scripture very fast. The singleness of the eye. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hmm. Look at it. Verse 6 of Matthew, Matthew 6. Verse 22, Matthew 6, 22. He says, the light of the body is the eye. 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 He didn't say the light of the body is the lamp. He didn't say the light of the body is the lamp. Okay? He has not said the light of the body is the lamp. He says the light of the body is the eye, not the lamp, not the torch. He didn't say the light of the body is the torch. He says the light of the body is the eye. If you have the eye, even if there's no touch, he says you already have light. He says if you have the eye, you don't need a touch. He says the light of the body is the eye. Oh, hallelujah. And it says, if therefore your eye be single, if your eye is single, it says, your whole body shall be full of light. If your eye is single, he didn't say if there's too much light in the room. No, he says, if your eye is single, it is not about the light which is present in the room. Hallelujah. It's not about the light which is in the room. No. It is the singleness. It's the singleness of your eye, the singleness of your eye. What does it mean for the eye to be single? For the eye to be single, he's talking about the wholeness, okay? The wholeness of the eye, the wholeness. There are people who are partial this, their sight has not been perfected. Now, if your sight has not been perfected, you cannot be a watchman because see, a watchman, even by the very word, watch, means he needs his eyes perfect. He needs his spiritual sight perfected. Because how are you praying if your sight is not perfected? How are you praying? Jesus said, watch and pray watch and pray watch and pray but if there's something wrong with your eye it means there will be something wrong with your prayer because it says watch use your eyes see and pray see and pray if there's something wrong with the seeing there will be something wrong with the praying and if there's something wrong with the praying you the evidence will be in the answers you see if you pray and you don't see the answer, the issue could be coming from your sight, how you see. Because there are things that God has done. Have you seen them? Have you seen them? For example, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He is, he is a new creation. You don't pray and say, God, make me a new creation. Lord, make me a new creation. Make me No, he says, if you are in Christ, you are, you are, you are. And then he says, Old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Have you seen that old things are passed away? Have you seen that they have passed away? Or you are praying for them to pass away. Oh God, may they pass away. May they pass away. May they pass away. Have you agreed with God that they have passed away? He says, all, all things are passed away. All things 
old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Have you noticed that they have passed away? Or you are praying for them? Because if you don't know that they have passed away, you'll pray that they should pass away. Oh God, let them pass away. Oh God, let them pass away. Oh God, make me a new creation. Oh God, make me a new. It says, if any man is in Christ, the question is, are you in Christ? If you are in Christ, it says you are, you are a new creation, which means there's a way you are. There's how you are. Do you know who you are, how you are, where you are? And if you know who you are, what you are, how you are, now you can pray an intelligent prayer. Okay? You can now pray an intelligent prayer. He says, old things are passed away. So when you're talking to God, God is not expecting you to ask him for old things to pass away. He, old things have already passed away. According to scripture, they have passed away. Okay? He says, old, old things have become new. You see, but when he says all things have become new, he says, behold, 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 all things. He says, behold, that part is very important. He says, behold, all things have become new. He says, see it, see it, see it, see it, see that all things have become new. See it, he says, look at it, see it, see it. <laughs> behold, all things have become new. Oh, I have an old problem. No, old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Those old, old curses of, that, that you inherited from your parents, they are passed away. All the diseases that you had before, they are passed away. All your challenges that you had before, they are passed away. It says, all things are become new. Things have become new. And it says, behold it, see it, see it. Now, when you see that all things have become new, when you see it, you cannot, there's a way you are going to pray because of what you see. Because when you ask for what God has already done, the answer from God will be, see it. See that I've done it. See that I've done it. See that I've done it. See that I have done it. Just behold, behold, all things have become new. So when you pray, say, oh God, make, make all things new. Oh God, make all things new. God says, okay, you see, behold that they have become new. Behold it, see it, see it, see it. That's the answer from God. God is not going to make anything new. It is you to see. But that seeing, your seeing of it, will be according to how perfect your eye is, how, how, how sound your, your eyes are in the realm of the spirit. Can you see it? Because if you can't see it, you will still pray for it. You are praying for what you can't see. You see that? But it says watch and pray. So if we are going to affect the prayer place, we have to first affect the seeing place. The seeing place. Perfecting the seeing place. And how do we perfect the seeing place? Allow the word of God to be as it is. If he says all things are become new, uh, uh, agree with that. When you agree with it, it will wash your eyes. It will become your new eyes. Oh, hallelujah. It will become your new way of seeing things. You will see that all things are new. And because all things are new, it will affect how you pray. You'll find yourself thanking God for all things are now new. Say, Father, thank you. All things are new. <laughs> you see, that prayer is for a man who has seen that all things are new. Not assume. He didn't say assume all things are new. It's not an assumption. It is a reality. They are new. They are new. But your mind has to accept that they are new. And when you accept that they are new, when you pray, you, you flow in thanksgiving. Father, I thank you. All things are new. Okay, so the prayer of a man who can't see cannot be the same prayer of a man who can see. Hallelujah. You remember in the Bible, in the scriptures, there's a, a prophet called Elisha. He had a servant. The servant saw that the, the, they had been attacked. They had been surrounded. And then he told his master, he says, master, we are finished. He says, we are finished. When he said we are finished, it means he had concluded. He had concluded. That is how for him he saw it. He for him, when he saw them surrounded, his interpretation in his head was that we are finished. That is how he interpreted it. We are done. If we have been surrounded like this, there's nothing we can do about it. We are but finished. Is that how you operate in your life? Where if you see enemies around you, 
it means you are finished. Many Christians are like that. Okay? Many Christians are like that. When they give them a report and say, well, things are like this and like this and like this, like, wow, we are finished. If that's how they, if, if how they have reported it is how it really is, <laughs> we are done. We are gone. What did they say? They said that what? That he can no longer what? Uh, they even, they, they, uh, <laughs> we are finished. <laughs> we are, if that is how things are, we are done. We are gone. That's the mentality of a servant. That's why he was a servant. He was a servant of Elisha. That's how he sees things. And he's not ready to graduate to a son. Because as a man who can see like that, he can be a son. He has to remain a servant. When he sees soldiers surrounding, he says, ah, guys, we are finished. Who told you? Elisha said, Elisha prayed. Look at this. Elisha prayed. Because you see, that's, these things are changing in, in that realm. He, he, he says, Lord, he prayed for him. He said, Lord, open his eyes. Open his eyes, not our eyes. His, because me, I can see. <laughs> me, I can see. Help him. Open his eyes. Assist him. He's, in, he's confused. He doesn't know what's around. <laughs> Elisha was confident where he was. Surrounded, but confident. They are, they are both surrounded, but one is confident. Another one is afraid. One is at peace. Why? Because of his eyes, his sight. He says, open his eyes to see what I'm seeing. Me, there's something I'm seeing that he's not seeing. Help him open his eyes to see. And actually, the Bible calls him a young man. If you read the scripture there, it says, and the Lord opened the eyes of a young man. He was young. It's, 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 for, the, it's for the nepios, for the children in the spirit, that the ones who see things like that. When they see that they are surrounded, they say, I'm finished. How can you say you are finished? You to be fin Do you know who you are? Do you know how much you are for you to be finished? <laughs> We cannot that easily finish. We are too much to just finish anyhow. Now we are finished. Just because they have written, written to me a letter or we have sacked you. I don't, I don't get sacked. I'm, I'm too big to enter any sack. <laughs> but they sacked me. Pray for me. I lost the job. The only job I had. The only job, the only job you have. The ministry of a watchman is also a job. And God pays it and highly. When you begin to pray for people, there's a salary. <laughs> God can't put you there to pray and then leave you there without paying you. If men can pay, if men can pay, God also can pay. It's a very heavy office. The one of the watchman is a very heavy, very heavy office. Because the entire country depends on it. The entire country, the entire country. Countries have to have watchmen who watch. Those men have to be highly paid, or else they will allow rebels to enter the country. So you, you, are, you, are, you are the person who God has put there to ensure that no rebel enters the place. Okay? How can he not pay you? It's a very high office. So e Elisha was functioning differently because for him, he was seeing in the realm of the spirit. He was a mature Christian. He's not, not, not a Christian per se, because Christianity began by, with Jesus Christ. He was a mature uh, man in the, in the things of the spirit. This other one was called a young man. Young, because those are for young people. They're the ones who, when they get surrounded, when they, when they write, they, they, they say, well, uh, we have sucked you. Chasing them from that job means that that's the end of their life. What do you mean the end of my life? My life does not, has no end. My life has no, you can't end it. Because you didn't begin it. No man can end my life because no, one be, there are no man began it. It was begun by God and God is not planning to finish it. It's called everlasting life. So nothing can abort it. Hallelujah. And so these two men, the one who sees in the spirit and the one who does not, they can't pray the same prayer. The prayer of the other one is we are finished. Lord, we are finished. Please help me. Help me. I'm finished. I'm finished, Lord. Into your hand I commit my spirit. Because <laughs> he knows he's going to die. Is Lord, into your hand I commend my spirit. No. <laughs> Elisha says, open his eyes. The Bible says, the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. You see that? He opened his eyes and he saw. Listen, this is the same man who saw that they were surrounded. He saw that he was surrounded. He saw it that I am surrounded. Okay. 
Now, the Bible says his eyes were opened. Now, which opening of the eyes was this now? Okay. You see that? Thank you, Spirit of God. Yes, Bishop. He says, he opened the eyes of his heart. Your heart has eyes. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the, the same man had seen. This, this is a different kind of seeing. The same man had seen that they were surrounded. He had seen it. But now the Bible says, God opened his eyes, which means before he was blind. Now, you think you see because you are seeing, you're looking. No, there's another way to see. He says, open his eyes. And the Bible says, when the Lord opened his eyes, he says, behold, the mountain was full. <laughs> the mountain was full of horses. The, horse, the mountain didn't have one horse and one chariot. It was loaded. The, the whole area was, I mean, there was tight security. Tight. Why? Because he was the man of God. You can't be a man of God and God gives you an angel to work with. No. The mountain was full. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. The valley was full of demons and the hell and enemies. But the mountain was full of horses and chariots. It says, of chariots of fire, char listen, chariots of fire, 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 hmm. round about, look at this, round about Elisha, not both of them. The chariots were not around or, or both of them. The chariots, all those chariots were around one man. <laughs> all those horses were around one man. Why? Because it was only that one man that was seeing. You see? When you, if you can see, you are surrounded by horses and chariots of fire. If you can see, if you can see, and if you can't see, you are surrounded by the devil and demons. But if you can see, you are, <laughs> if you can see, you are surrounded by chariots of fire and horses. If you can't see, you are surrounded by problems, by debts, by devil, devils, you are surrounded by enemies. But if you can see, you are surrounded. <laughs> Yes, we are surrounded. We are, we are all surrounded. But what is surrounding us is not the same. <laughs> what is surrounding us is not the same. We are all surrounded, but not, not by the same thing. Some of us are surrounded by enemies, demons, uh, situations. Then some of us are surrounded by chariots of fire. Oh, hallelujah. And the difference between these two men is their sight, their seeing. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Your sight. You have to allow to believe what God has told you. <coughs> Praise God. What the Lord has said to you. Let it be your new way of seeing. If God sees you prosperous, see the same way. Hallelujah. If God sees you well, see yourself the same way. How God sees you is how you see you. That is how to cleanse your eye. You cleanse your eye with the word of God. With the word of God. Now, let's go to, let me, let's read something in the book of Acts, chapter 16. Acts 16. Why is it important to perfect your sight as a watchman? Why is it important to perfect your sight? Because the things you see physically, the things you see physically, have found a foundation in the realm of the spirit. Okay? Everything we see out physically, if it is a debt that has refused to be paid, that is becoming stubborn, it keeps increasing. If it is a situation that is not going away, if it is a condition that is visible and stubborn, okay? It has its foundation in the spirit. Every physical thing has its foundation in the spirit. So it is a mistake trying to deal with it as you have seen it. He says, watch and pray. Watch and pray, okay? Watch and pray. But the watching is different like we have seen. The watching has to be in the spirit. Where you look at the foundation of things, then you pray. Okay? 
not to look at the things physically because every physical thing has its found it, it has its its uh, its uh, <coughs> origin in the spirit it is coming from the spirit realm every circumstance we see is coming from the spirit realm so the mistake many do is they watch physically and then pray they watch physically and they pray when they see a condition then they pray okay they read things outwardly and then they pray say oh god help my mother oh god help my father oh god help help oh god touch my boss oh god touch because they have seen the boss behaving a certain way but they don't understand where the boss began acting that way how how why did he where did it begin from because this is the same boss i've had all the all the years behind why has he changed behavior now what is its origin it must be coming from the realm of the spirit so it is not fixable physically it is fixable spiritually it is fixable spiritually when you understand that these things are fixable spiritually you stop quarreling because quarreling is trying to deal with it physically i will show him my true colors let me go and show him my true colors now you're going to fight physically but what you're fighting has an origin you might even win in your physical fight but that thing that produced it will produce it again even if you change jobs <coughs> praise god even if you change jobs the thing that made your boss act that way will follow you and act, bring cause the same thing in the new boss and then you th- you say oh i have a generational curse no you have a generational not seeing in the spirit <laughs> <laughs> it's a generation even even your parents were not seeing there <laughs> so even you are not seeing you, that place you're not seeing <laughs> that keeps producing that place that keeps producing the things you see physically there's a there's a thing in the spirit that keeps producing what you're seeing and so it is dealt with it is fixable from that place every physical thing has its foundation in the spirit hallelujah and so they are fixable from there. Let's look at the book at the book of uh, Acts chapter 16. Acts 16 25 and 26. Acts 16 25 and 26. I don't know whether we have time now to see the rest of the things. It says and at midnight Paul and Silas these guys were in prison. It says at midnight Paul and Cyrus prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. They sang and it was loud enough for the the other prisoners to hear. Verse 26, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone and everyone's bands were loosed look at that it says they prayed and they, they, they prayed and sang praise okay so you will understand also the kind of prayer they were praying because if they were praying complaining prayer they wouldn't sing praise for them to sing praise that tells you what was in the prayer they were thanking god they were thanking god when you realize that god has done all things you thank and when you pray, it will also cause you to praise. Okay? He says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. And then says, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Listen, what was shaken was not the prison. What was shaken was the foundation of the prison. The foundation of the prison. Every prison has a foundation. God does not shake the walls of the prison. You see? They, he does not shake the walls of the circumstance. He does not shake the walls of the condition. He shakes the foundation. But you see, the kind of prayer that shakes foundation is the one that has praise in it. It has pra- because it has understood that God has performed. So as this man is praying because he knows God has performed, the prayer is powerful enough to shake the foundation. It shakes the foundation. God does not want just to remove the prison. No, he wants, 
He doesn't want to just because if he removes the prison, you'll be back in prison soon. If the foundation is not dealt with, you'll be imprisoned again. That's why many Christians they continue being imprisoned and they pray for release. Oh God, release me. Oh God, release me. Release me, Lord. Then God, God releases them, and then tomorrow they are back. Why? Because the foundation was not dealt with. The, the, the foundation was not dealt with. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. He says the foundation of the prison, not the prison, the foundation. And so when he says watch and pray, you see the foundation first and pray intelligently. Look at where it is coming from and then deal with it from the foundation. See spiritually and deal with the condition from the foundation. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. <sighs> our time, our time. I don't know. Can we have an extra something like five minutes? Just to, just to explain a little bit something else. If yes, if I can get a notification about that, we can do the five minutes or we can push this thing into next time. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, my bishop is going to, to, to allow us or to let us put it in the next time because I see time, you just have three minutes. We have three minutes and they are not, <laughs> they're not enough. Five minutes is okay. Five minutes is okay, praise God. Thank you so much, Bishop. Let's use the five minutes uh, intelligently. The second part where we need, uh, where the watchman needs to be developed is in his program, his program, how you are programmed, how you are programmed. And that's very important, how you are programmed, your mindset, how you think, because your thoughts, your thoughts will influence your praying. Your thoughts will influence your praying, okay? Your thoughts, okay? And that's the same thing. You study the word of God until you are convinced about God's word. If God said you are blessed, are you convinced that you're blessed? It is that conviction that becomes your program. Your program is your conviction. Are you convinced? Praise the Lord God. Are you convinced that you're blessed? Are you convinced that God loves you? Because there are people who also don't, who don't know. They just, they know that God loves them, but they're not, it's, not, it's not a conviction. Are you convinced? These things we are preaching to you, do they convince you? Have you allowed the word of God to convince you? The Bible says that the, the children of Israel, they could not enter into the promised land, even though it was promised, their land was promised, but they couldn't enter into that promise because of unbelief. But the word unbelief there was the word unpersuadableness. To be, to be persuaded, to be, they were not persuadable. They were not, they were not convincible. You couldn't convince them that there was such a land. Praise God. When Moses was preaching, he says, the land is a land of milk and honey. They said, which kind of land can that be? How can a land be milk and honey? And so they could not be persuaded, convinced. Now, if you're not convinced about the word of God, it means you are convinced otherwise. There are people who are convinced that they will not live up to 100 years. It's in them. They are convinced they can't go there. They can't live up to 100. And it doesn't matter how we pray for you or how you, you pray. As long as you are convinced you will not make 100, something will happen between now and 100. Oh. God has to work on your convictions, your convictions, your convictions, your convictions. He has to work on your convictions. Are you convinced that you are more than a conqueror or you're still debating it? Or you're still debating? Are you debating or you're convinced? When the Bible says you are more than a conqueror, do you, do you know it? Are you convinced about it? That's your convictions are your program. Now, if you're programmed to fail, prayer will not help you. If you're programmed, if you're programmed not to make it, even if we pray for you to make it, even if you pray to make it, but your program is for you not to make it, you cannot make it. There are people who come for us to ask to pray for them to receive a miracle that they're not programmed for. Are you programmed to live a great life? If you're not programmed to live a great life, even if we pray for you, the prayer will only work for that moment when we prayed. 
when you go back and begin to think the same way you have been thinking, it will deactivate what we asked for in prayer. Ay, 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 ay. If you think failure, even if you pray success on your head, your thinking will take you back to fail failure. And then we have to keep praying for you, praying for you, praying for you, and wasting time. How are you programmed? How are you programmed? How are you programmed? Now, uh, here at home, we have uh, chicken. We have chicken here. And one of those days I was discussing with my wife. And, you know, one of the chicken is actually sitting on its eggs. So I asked my wife, I said, how does a, this hen know that after laying the eggs, it is supposed to sit on the eggs? Who taught this hen to sit on the eggs? And she gave me a very intelligent answer. She said, it is in the DNA of the hen. It is taught by the DNA to sit on its eggs and it hatches them. It is in its DNA to sit on the eggs, which means the DNA is an instruction in the hen. It is instructed. Now, your body receives, it, it has messages. The Bible, no, not the Bible, the, the science teaches us that the brain receives messages, okay? It receives messages. When you see, the brain receives the message of what you have seen, and then it gives instruction. So the brain gives instruction. So the DNA that you have is your instruction. The Bible says we are not born of the incorruptible seed, of, of the corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. We are born of the incorruptible seed. That incorruptible seed is our new instruction, is, is, is our DNA, that we are instructed differently. So if this word of God can become your new instructor, you will begin to pray right. Oh, hallelujah. Your brain will interpret differently and instruct differently because the brain receives instruction, no, it receives a message, and then it interprets and then gives instruction to the body. For example, if a bee stings you anywhere, the brain will understand that you have been stung, and then it will instruct the body to counter, uh, counter, counter attack the enemy. So in the same way, since the brain receives messages, that's why we also teach the word of God. We teach. As we teach, we give you a message. We are giving you these are messages. The word of God is a message. If your mind can receive this message, it, you, it will begin to process it the way it's supposed to process it and then give instructions. So when you begin to pray, you are praying because the, DNA, the God DNA is the one that is determining your prayer. Oh, yeah, but shut up. You are instructed by the God thing in you. The incorruptible thing in you is what is instructing your system to pray a certain way. Oh, hallelujah. What is your DNA? How are you instructed? Do you lay on your eggs? Because prayer also is a way to lay on your eggs. There are people who lay eggs, but they don't know how to sleep on the eggs until they hatch. Okay? They are, they are good at giving birth to projects. They say, uh, I've begun a new project. Then before, after two weeks, you ask them, where is the other project? You say, it failed. What did it, what did it fall? The hen which gave birth to that project did not have the wisdom, wasn't instructed to lay on its egg until the egg gives birth to something that can move. Okay? That's the ministry of a watchman. is actually to lay on those projects until they become chicks. Praise God. Because some people have a vision that they can't sleep on. They have dreams. They say, well, I have a plan. And then you find that the plan you have, you don't have the wisdom. The chicken knows how to sit on its eggs. You, you have plans that you have never sat on. You have never sat on to pray. You have never gone on them to provide a warmth that they need for them to hatch into actual things that we can actually see. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. I will not go past because I asked for five minutes and exactly five minutes have passed. And to ask that God will bless you. There are many things we have not shared, okay? But we bless God. If God allows us, we shall share them in the next, in the coming uh, program. Otherwise, I want to ask that God bless you. 
do your ministry as a watchman and watch things come to pass. Watch the word of God come to pass to the glory of God. Father, I thank you for everyone who has watched. I pray that this message will become clearer to them and that they will enjoy this ministry of a watchman, that their eyes will be enlightened, that they may know the hope of their calling and they may function in the, in the dimension you have called us to function in as watchmen. We give you praise and glory for it's in Jesus' name we have believed and prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Over to you back uh, to, to Bishop. God bless you. Bless your day.